Italian composer Fausto Rometelli in uh, some interviews stated that uh, he loves the music of composers who are not academic. Uh, he used to listen to, to various uh, genres which often had no obvious correlation with what he composed himself. Moreover, he wrote music which didn't exist yet, but uh, which he wanted to listen to. Uh, th this was the main reason of composing for him. Uh, during the 80s, Rometelli studied in Milano and Siena, uh, being particularly drawn to, to the compositions of Ligeti, Chelsea and Donatoni. In the beginning of 90s, he went to Paris with a desire to explore spectralism in depth, since, in uh, his opinion, uh, Gérard Griset, Tristan Murray, Yves Dufour, and Michel Levinas uh, had succeeded in creating a novel categories of thinking. These categories provided the generation of Romitelli with a basis for fresh uh, forms of communication. Uh, let me add that after the studies in IRCAM, Rometelli worked in, in this institute for a few years as a composer researcher, but later elaborated uh, there the electronic material for some of his pieces. Rometelli has said, I think that contemporary music as a genre doesn't exist anymore. Composer has a task to reflect, transform and cover all the sonorous universe of current times. Not just the classical music world, but all that such a universe embraces. Uh, Rometelli was particularly keen on the kind of hybrid zone between spectralism and certain manifestations of, uh, of rock music. He has said, I love the psychedelic rock of 60s and early 70s. I love the sound of Jimi Hendrix, Pink Floyd and Velvet Underground. I love uh, Nirvana as well as the ambient music of Brian Eno. His own land is one of the masterpieces of electronic music. End of quote. And so Romitelli's uh, first experiments in bringing together spectralism and rock music were apparent in pieces Acid Dreams and Spanish uh, Queens for Ensemble and Trance for Soprano Ensemble and Electronics, Cupio di Solvi for 14 Musicians, uh, Blood on the Floor painting 1986 for 8 Musicians. The diversity found uh, therein including popular music, has been, according to the composer, sifted, shared and uncleaned. He has said, I have only chosen what interests me, uh, what I feel as belonging to me, putting aside everything that feels uh, 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 superfluous. Indeed, I remain modernist, since the considerations regarding musical language are paramount to me. We are our language. Composer is the language that he creates. End of quote. Composer Pierre Slanks, in his study on Romitelli's music, points out that the mystical titles of his pieces often refer to a network of references which defines the psychological aesthetical framework or the space where the musical ritual takes place. Uh, literary impulses often are mixed with references to visual art, cinema, politics as, as well as autobiographical elements. One of Romitelli's favorite Authors was Belgian writer and painter Henri Michaud. 
His books about the use of mescaline and hallucinogens inspired uh, Rometelli's triptych Professor Bad Trip, composed between 1998 and 2000. Uh, this is Rometelli's key work in which his personal style uh, flourishes in full spectrum. The manner of Michaud's writing in his descriptions of hallucinations opened up Romitelli's imagination. Uh, the composer sensed an urge to work with a musical material that would be directly linked with Michaud's expression. In Professor Bad Trip uh, there is covered the large territory from harmonic sound to noise. Metallic shades dominate. In the instrumental writing there are utilized techniques with clear roots in electroacoustics like reverb, feedback distortion and amplification. In the image you can see the instrumental setup for each movement of the triptych. The musicologist Beth Levy observes that Romitelli has transferred to sounds the hallucination depictions of Michaud by applying an original monstrosity of sound. This aspect is further explored by musicologist Eric Denu, who has sharply form formulated the main aesthetical features of P Professor Bad Trip as well as sketched important points of reference for understanding the formal principles of the triptych. Uh, Denu writes, In Bad Trip the in interior processes are invariably rooted in short and naive ideas uh, such as complexes of slightly elusive melodic fragments, appealing and, and fragile harmonies, uh, uh, brief ornamentations, exalted, uh, glorified as size. Uh, not ha having the time to unfold, the material is at once subjected to jolts. It repeats itself, but one realizes that it is mutant infested by viruses. It, be it becomes monstrous." End of quote. Interestingly, in Romitelli's original a variation of material, one can find the influence of spectralism, especially uh, Gerard Griset. I, re I refer to cyclic repetition of mostly a brief uh, structures which are gradually subject to changes. Uh, this aspect of compositional technique can, can be seen in a close connection with the formal concepts of process and interpolation, which uh, uh, musicologist uh, Joshua Feinberg uh, scrutinizes in his article about the main techniques and notions of spectral music. Uh, Feinberg states that while uh, not unique to spectral uh, music, the idea of continuous uh, transformation from one state to another or process has uh, taken on a special manifestation and played a, a crucial role in the formal construction of spectral music. The types of processes uh, found in spectral music are significantly different from those of minimalist uh, music. Uh, for example, in that they affect all the musical parameters together rather than acting on only one or two, uh, like uh, phasing. Uh, typical processes of early pieces from the movement were uh, transformations from order and stability, which includes harmonicity, towards the disorder and instability of uh, noise, or uh, vice versa. A good example 
of, the, of this kind of multi-parametric process is the beginning of Murray's piece Gondwana. Uh, the kinds of processes used in this music are distinct from uh, many formal processes found in other types of music in that uh, they uh, function on a perceptible uh, levels. They are not underlying mathematical structures, but permeate all levels of the piece and are an important aspect of the perceived musical movement and evolution. The kind of smooth uh, transformation from one state to another described above often makes uh, use of interpolations. These are used in almost all aspects of the music, especially uh, pitches and, and rhythms. End of quote. In the image uh, you can see the way two steps are interpolated between the beginning and end points of a hypothetical process. In Rometelli's music, uh, cyclic repetition and variation is always related to processual transformation. Uh, the aim of uh, this presentation is to demonstrate the diversity of Rometelli's cyclic structures and to reveal their connection with form building and dramaturgy. As the main object of research, I have chosen the largest movement of the uh, triptych, uh, lesson two. For the sake of comparison, also some se segments of lesson one have been analyzed. It's uh, most likely that the analysis of lesson three would point to additional aspects of Romitelli's form building. Yet the conclusions based on the study of lesson one and lesson two can be seen as self-sufficient. Coming back to the original monstrosity of sound in Professor Badrip, it's important to remark that uh, for uh, Rometelli its roots uh, lie not only in Henri Michaud's world of uh, images. Rometelli has drawn parallels also with a triptych uh, three studies for a self-portrait by painter Francis Bacon. In this cycle of paintings, the portrait of the artist can be viewed in variously deformed states. In turn, the mysterious title Professor Bad Trip is not an abstract combination of words. It's the stage name of Italian uh, cy cyberpunk uh, graphical designer Gianluca Larici. Like many Italian intellectuals, Rometelli attributed a certain socio-political mission to his creative work. Among his few articles, uh, there is one titled Composer as Virus. Rometelli writes, The music of today has to be irrepressible and mysterious. It has to reflect the, the massive alienation and standardization processes. The reality of the world is distorted and violent. My music is the distorted and violent. And elsewhere he says, a beautiful music that primarily seeks to please a, a listener uh, doesn't interest me. To be Open to the world of sound uh, doesn't mean to take a bit of e ethnic music and uh, rock and to mix it all nicely. That would be a characteristic to a type of culture that I detest, against which I protest. End of quote. And so, in the personalities of Bacon and Larici, uh, Rometelli uh, found his soulmates, uh, bold witnesses of the violent side of the world. Yet maybe it is the autobiographical element 
that lies at the foundation of Romitelli's musical ideas, including uh, those uh, found in Professor Bad Trip. For about a decade, the composer fighted with cancer, which eventually caused his premature uh, death at the age of just 41. In his obsession with what he himself called the repetition or degradation of material, one can sense the consciousness about the fatalism of his illness. Now the analysis of Romitelli's Lesson 1 and Lesson 2 from Professor Badrip will follow. It has been carried out by the author of this presentation, Janis Petraskevich. This includes all the schemes as well as the musical examples, which are schematic analytical reductions of the relevant passages from the score. The first part of a triptych, uh, Lesson 1, consists of introduction, four sections, intermezzo between second and uh, third section, and a coda. From a bird's eye, introduction together with the first and second section, as well as the intermezzo, create a unified extensive formal block, whilst the third and fourth sections together with coda unite into another large formal segment. Such a view can be justified by an observation that, firstly, the, ma the materials of introduction and intermezzo resemble each other, creating an arch. Uh, secondly, one can find uh, similar formal principles in the first and second sections. They both have been uh, structured as directional processes applying the technique of interpolation, where the compression of musical time creates an increase of horizontal density. The cyclic structures here repeat and become progressively shorter. In the first section this process covers the time interval from 17 quarter notes to one quarter note, whilst in the second section from 10 quarter notes to one and a half quarter note. Let's point out the characterization of the triptych's main features as described by Eric Denu. Uh, he writes, With the gusts of increasingly dense and unstable waves, initial harmonic purity is followed by a prolonged ascent of dross and disorder. End of quote. Indeed, one can say that the processes of the first and second section of Lesson 1 are the exposition of the whole triptych. The contrast between harmonic clarity versus more noisy sound results in a change of the predominant sounding features, namely the perception of harmony is replaced by the dominance of timbre and texture. Uh, moreover, as can be seen in the image, the proportion 2 to 1 is applied with a certain consistency. Taking into account the durations of structures in quarter notes, if we look at adjacent uh, structures, this proportion can be found between a first and second section as well as the first and second phase of the first section. In order to demonstrate the compression of material in time, I will analyze the second phase of a transformation and the goal of the first section. Second phase consists of uh, uh, 13 cycles, which get progressively shorter from the duration of uh, 10 a quarter notes in the first cycle, uh, striving towards the, the goal, which is 18 repetitions of a cycle as short as just one a quarter note. In this process, the harmonic rhythm gradually increases 
and some chords get omitted. The initial material in the first cycle in this process is a sequence of eight chords with a clear directional character which is de determined mainly by the contrary motion of outer voices. Already in the second cycle we can see some transformation. Uh, the structure of a third chord is varied, but the fourth chord is omitted. In the third cycle we can hear the chords 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, but from uh, fourth to tenth cycle we hear the chords 1, 2, 5, 6, 8. After that uh, Romitelli uses the sequence 1, 5, 7, 8. Note that as uh, throughout the rest of Professor Bad Trip, this segment is dominated by tutti sound of the ensemble, which is treated as a macro instrument. Here the chords are being arpeggiated in a rhythmically diverse manner. We can recognize that when comparing the homophonic basis of the structure with the actual score. Uh, thus, in the first and second section of lesson one, Romitelli displays a triptych's main principle of processual transformation, which is a gradual increase of horizontal density. In turn, in the central static a third section, as well as the concluding relaxing fourth section, he introduces more expanded cycles. The two ultimate cycles last approximately 1 minute 40 seconds each. Employment of larger cycles results in slower harmonic rhythm. That is, harmony becomes more static because the composer does not proportionally increase the number of chords when increasing the duration of cycles. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the third section, which is texturally and rhythmically very saturated, is harmony-wise sedentary, although one must add that Robitelli enriches the chordal tones with non-chordal tones, including the doubling of some chordal segment in several octaves. In the image one can see the beginning of a third section. Harmonic cycles, which consist of four chords, are gradually expanded in time, but the insertion episode functions as a contrast in a faster harmonic pulsation. In the image one can see the homophonic skeleton of this musical segment. Gérard Griset, in his 40-minute composition a Vortex Temporum, among various ideas, has included three different manifestations of time, which he has characterized as ordinary time or time of human language and breathing, a more or less expanded time or time of whales, a more or less compressed time or time of birds and insects. Although Robitelli has not pointed out any direct influence of Vortex Temporum on Professor Badrip, there are certain 
parallels between the aforementioned concept of Griset and the diapason of time structures uh, discerned in Professor Badrip. The middle part of the triptych is the longest one. Its duration is approximately 17 minutes. In comparison, uh, lesson 1 lasts 14 minutes, but lesson 3 11 minutes. A lesson 2 co consists of three sections, which are related approximately by the proportion 2 against 2 against 1. The first section is introductory, the second one uh, central and developing, while the third one concluding. The first two sections are both more expanded and structurally more complex than the third. In the first and second sections we can find contrasts and refined hierarchy. The third section is markedly static and monolithic. One can say that in the second section there are variously developed the ideas that are already presented in the first section. In lesson 2 uh, both the first and second section consist of three phases introduction, di directional process and cello solo cadenza which is the culmination or the, the, or the goal of the process. Cello solo cadenzas are not written out in the score. In the recording of Ictus Ensemble Cadenza 1 is long and formally especially important. Among the three phases of the first section there is proportion 1 against 1 against 2 because Cadenza 1 uh, lasts approximately 3 minutes 30 seconds but uh, both previous phases last 1 minute 45 seconds each. In a, a turn, Cadenza 2, in the interpretation of Ictus Ensemble, is brief. It creates an arch with Cadenza 2 and functions as retrospection. The unity of the first phase and its specific harmonic timbral identity is underlined by a pedal point, a low E, which in soft and varied dynamics is played by bass guitar. This phase consists of six microphases. In each of, of these microphases the main musical material, which I have labeled A, is uh, followed by additional objects. Thus a structure is attained with the following combinations of material A plus B, A plus B, A plus C, A plus C plus B, A plus D plus B, A plus C plus D plus B. These compound objects are of the following length counting in quarter notes. 5, 8, 11, 15, 9, 15. Object A is the main material of the whole first section, or if referring to the terminology of Eric Denu, it is the short and naive idea on which the musical uh, process is based. This object has two versions which appear in, in the first and second phase respectively. Thus they are labeled as A and E in my analysis. In the first phase the basis of A is a resigned melodic motif in a narrow diapason. In the second phase it transforms into an energic motif which is strongly tied with the timbre of trumpet. The objects A of the first phase appear also in incomplete form 
and they are rhythmically varied. It is important that uh, Romitelli harmonizes the tones of the motif in a quasi-spectral manner. Thus, whenever object A occurs, each time we hear a short chordal sequence, the, the lowest voice being the aforementioned melodic uh, structure, for instance in bar 3. Importantly, uh, contrary to the way how, for example, in several works of Gerd Ligeti from 60s, such as uh, Lux Aeterna and Lontano, uh, harmonies imperceptibly flow into one another. In Romitelli's music, chord changes are clear cut. In the object A, it is the melodic motif that functions as perceptual foreground, while the other chordal tones are rather kind of shadows. This is determined by register, timbre and expressive character. Object B is characterized by, by rich natural harmonics of string instruments in triplet eight notes, with dynamics rapidly moving between sforzati and niente. However, uh, the main accentuated impulses are repetitions of uh, the pitch uh, G, which is, uh, uh, which is fundamental of the spectra. Uh, the pitches uh, G are played in, in relatively uh, longer uh, durations in electric uh, gu uh, guitar that interplays with the short uh, uh, tremolos of harmonics in flute as, as well as bisbigliandos in clarinet. The first exposure of object B starts al already in bar 1. While objects B are characterized by sharp sforzati that cut into the soft sound of objects A, uh, the objects uh, C create arches with uh, objects A and continue them in some way, uh, namely object C uh, being held in pianissimo is characterized by, by quasi-melodic glissandi in the range of a perfect fifth. Uh, these repetitions create various rhythmic shapes, uh, defining that this uh, gesture is the more dynamic one among the materials of the first phase. A note that such a dy dynamism is attained due to the time that is allotted to the objects C. As, uh, as one can see in the image. Romitelli has found uh, subtle resources of I instrumentation for the glissandi of objects uh, C. V variously interact Kazoo, the voice of the flutist, the clarinets, microtones, and the cello. The temporally important for the identity of this object are also gongs, two mouth harmonicas, and violin. These instruments, to, together with the viola, elect, electric guitar, and bass guitar, put uh, the characteristic glissandos of objects C in texturally harmonic uh, frame, framework, which schematically are represented in the image. The nucleus of object D is a short, fast, crescendo, diminuendo gesture played by the clarinet in a wide ambitus with wave-like contour. The function of this passage is an arpeggio of the respective chord. Uh, this is a representative example of, of the way how Romitelli combines 
dy dynamism with stability. Dynamism as a virtuosic movement and stability as the harmony being cohesive factor of the individual sounds. The second phase of the first section is a purposeful transformation process. It consists of 10, of 10 varied repetitions of the compound object E plus F and 6 repetitions of the object E without F. Uh, during this process the composer at first increases uh, horizontal and vertical density by saturating texture with written out glissandi, fast quasi-chromatic upward passages. At the, the moment when this process gets stuck in three invariable repetitions of the compound object E plus F, uh, there follows a swift compression in time of the object E without F. Here we can uh, draw parallels with the structurally similar solutions in lesson 1. The goal of the described di directional process is cello solo cadenza 1. Uh, there in the foreground comes the sonority, the t t timbral the nuances of the instrument, virt virtuosity of various motions. A character here is expressive, extrovert and tense. The average dynamic level is, is loud. However, at the end of the cadenza one hears relaxation that, uh, that creates a transition to second section of lesson two, a central and developing section. The form building principle of the first introductory phase of the second section uh, lies in threefold repetition of new compound object G plus H. The durations of the repetitions are varied. That they are five, seven, and eight quarter notes respectively. Both the object G and H consist of two chords. Note that the first chord of G and H are almost identical, but the second chord of G and H are, are different. In this short phase boundary between objects G and H is not perceptible. The individuality of these materials can be felt later in the expanded second stage when they are developed. The unity and identity of the first phase are set by the sustained homophonic texture and the invariable timbre. String instruments mouth harmonicas, piano and bass guitar. In the first, second and the third stage of the following directional process, the gradual changes in the cycles of object G plus H mainly refer to the following factors. A firstly, increase in textural complexity and secondly, increasing contrast between a clear harmonies and dense microtonally saturated pitch structures. However, in the, in the fourth stage, uh, the material of compound object G plus H gets compressed in time. Thus, we can uh, draw direct parallels between the final stages of the first and second sections. Uh, now, please see the schematic reduction of the music from a fourth till a ninth cycle.
main formal uh, novelties of the second section are the more or less contrasting materials with the function of inserts. Uh, these are uh, three episodes which interrupt the cyclic flow of object G plus H. These episodes co contribute to the segmentation of the process into several stages. They also create a certain unpredictability in the musical flow. That is important since, as musicologist Joshua Feinberg has remarked, the main strength of processes and interpolations is the sense of direction and even inevitability that they impart to, to the musical evolution. But this asset can, however, become a drawback when it leads to predictability. In the year 2000, Feinberg writes, one of the most significant changes that has occurred in spectral music in the, in the last 15 years is the desire to find strategies which will reduce this predictability while still preserving the previously acquired directionality. The first episode is an insert into the eighth cycle and it is characterized by, by regular pulse that is in stark contrast with the temporal instability of compound object G plus H. In the second stage of second uh, phase, there is just one cycle, uh, namely a ninth uh, cycle of compound object G plus H with an insert the second episode. The second episode is a fortissimo uh, duo of electric and bass guitars. It consists of a short sequence of chords repeated four times with, with rhythmic variation. Interestingly, harmony-wise, it is identical with the episode from the third section of lesson one. Thus Rometelli creates a mysterious arch between these movements of the triptych. In the third stage of second phase, the most prominent event is the third episode, which in comparison with earlier episodes is more expanded. It is structured as a, as a relatively independent process consisting of six equidistant cycles, each comprising eight quarter notes. In the context of the piece, it is remarkable that the homophonic basis of the structure, so characteristic to Romitelli, is replaced here with polyphonic frame framework. Its backbone is a scale which is exposed in a downward motion in the piano part in regular quarter notes. The scale is played six times, covering all the range of piano by moving from maximum high to low register. Likewise, all the, all the other textural elements of the third episode, the scale grows in intensity from a fragile pianissimo towards a heavy fortissimo. As the process unfolds, five quasi-ostinato lines are added to the scale. The entrance moments, as well as the subtle metrorhythmical deviations of those lines, contribute to the segmentation of the process into several cycles of development. Let's list those five quasi-ostinato lines one by one. Already in the first cycle there enters a two-note ostinato. In the second cycle, in the rhythm of quarter notes, uh, there enters a sequence of eight pitches in the middle register. In the third cycle, in the rhythm of quarter notes, there enters a sequence of eight pitches in the 
in the medium high register. In the fourth and fifth cycle, respectively, in quarter note rhythm, there enter two sequences of eight pitches in medium high register. The interaction of lines in polyphonic framework of the third episode can be seen in the image. In the actual score, this framework has been elaborated. Romitelli has used the technique that resembles the structural principles found earlier in this piece. And notably, as the process pr proceeds, Romitelli gradually increases the vertical and horizontal density of the texture by saturating the sound with large glissandos as well as b both downward and upward passages. These passages are fast, chromatic and played legato. As mentioned earlier, in the conclusion of the pr process of second section, as in the conclusion of the first section, the musical material gets compressed in time. Uh, here, this refers to the compound object G plus H. There increases the rate of harmonic changes, contributing to the increase in horizontal density. Starting from the uh, 15th uh, cycle, or bar 117, the idea of acceleration is clearly perceived. In the object G there are three chords, whilst in the object H there are four chords. However, in the second section the written out acceleration of cyclic rate durations is more expanded than in the first section. Uh, since Romitelli adds to this acceleration also the accelerando of tempo, his aim clearly has been to compress the compound object G plus H till a minimum. Importantly, Romitelli concludes the process of second section with a clear reference to the first section, uh, namely with a variant of object F in the piano part. It, it functions as a, as a transition to the second cello cadenza. After the activity of the first and second section, the third one is characterized by monolithic sound. Throughout uh, there is homophonic texture, quite dynamics uh, fluctuating between uh, niente and pianissimo, tutti orchestration and steady pulsation. Uh, Romitelli utilizes very subtle nuances of instrumentation. For instance, both guitars play with uh, wawa and volume pedals, as well as a bottleneck and ebo. Wind instruments play air sounds in combination with the flutterzunge. A trumpet plays with a closed harmon mute. In the string instruments there are transitions from sultasto to molto ponticello tremolo. The tam tam has to be played with a super ball, but the gong has to be immersed in a water after striking in order to attain a small glissandi. This section, which lasts approximately three minutes, splits into two phases of nearly equal uh, duration. Uh, the difference between these phases uh, lies in the harmonic rhythm. In the first phase each chord uh, lasts eight a quarter notes or eight seconds, while in the second phase the duration of each chord is four a quarter notes or four seconds. Interestingly, the third section is molded as a unified structure with no cyclic division. Rhythmic regularity creates arches with 
a first and a, a third episode of second section, which were uh, dominated by a clear pulse, although this time the, the music is static rather than dynamic. Significantly, uh, the explicitly slow uh, breathing of the, the music in the third section res resembles uh, the conclusion of uh, lesson one. The expanded time uh, here is in sharp contrast with the tendencies of compressed time, which manifests itself in the directional processes of lesson one and lesson two. After the triptych, Romitelli continued to develop his interest in cycles as what he himself called the degradation of material. For instance, according to the composer in Amok Coma for Ensemble and Electronics composed in 2001, the idea of, mu of musical process is uh, solely a pretext permitting him to make a clear his, his real interest, the epiphany of a hidden violence that reveals itself only through the, the chaotic derivation of musical material, through the ritual of its destruction as a discursive element, and its resurrection as incandescent material alien, out of control. In the video opera An Index of Metals, written with the text of Kenka Lenkovic and finished in 2003, Romitelli found himself compelled to follow these experiments uh, through to the limits of perception by projecting sound as though it were light reaching the extreme hallucination whereby sound is seen. End of quote. An index of metals is Romitelli's last work, the summary and culmination of his creative life. The aim of index of metals is to turn the secular form of opera into an experience of total perception plunging the spectator into an incandescent matter that is both luminous and sonorous, a magma of flowing sounds, shapes and colors, with no narrative but that of hypnosis, possession and a trance. It is a lay ritual, rather like the light shows of 60s or today's a rave parties in which space, having assumed a solid form through the volume of sound and visual saturation, appears to twist into a thousand anamorphoses. End of quote. And the following remark by Romitelli is crucial. Rather than calling on our analytical ability, like most contemporary music, an index of metals aims to take possession of the body with its, with its over-exposition of senses and pleasure. The story is that of the fusion of perception, the absence of landmarks, the henceforth limitless body in the furnace of a ritual mass of sound. End of quote. Uh, this remark illuminates the, the way how Professor Bad uh, Trip is perceived as well, uh, namely as rich sound sculptures whose main aspects are a grain, a thickness, porosity, a density, a brilliance and elasticity. Analytical insight into this structure makes it possible to approach closer the mystery of sounding, however it can't explain the artwork in its entirety. <laughs>